So VO3 finally has some competition. This week, Juan 2.5 drops, and it's a brand new video model that actually includes audio, just like Google's VO3. Building dreams is hard, unless you've got Lego. This has huge repercussions for anybody who uses AI for content creation, whether that's from a creative side or if you're someone who's trying to use AI for marketing. The greatest magic is an iPhone. Because not only is it a really strong model performance-wise, it also has virtually no restrictions. Drink Coke or we'll kill you. You can have anybody market any product you want, say anything you want. So we're essentially looking at VO3 with no guardrails. <sighs> right now, all I need is some Chase AI automation. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of this tool, whether you're using it for creative purposes or commercial. And at the end, I'm even gonna show you an NNN automation so we can actually automate this whole process and control it all from Airtable. So let's get started. So like I talked about in the intro, we're gonna be splitting this video really into two halves. The first half is gonna be us like manually going through the video creation workflow, right? How does Juan 2.5 work? And what should be your general creative process when it comes to creating videos that are actually good, right? Because there is some skill involved with that. And in the second half of the video, we'll dive into the N8N stuff. I'll give you the template hint. You can get it for free down in the comments and we'll go through how we can actually automate all this but there's no point in automating anything until you know how to use it for real, right? In a manual sense. And that's what we're gonna start with here. So one 2.5, like I said, this is essentially VO3's first real competition. Every other video generation model up until this point, with the exception of VO, hasn't been able to do audio at the same time. This one is, and it works pretty much exactly the same as VO. You'll see over here on the left, you have a section for the prompt, right? And you also have the ability to give it a first frame. Now, we're not able to do first frame, last frame with WAN 2.5 just yet, which is kind of a bummer, but you can, at the very least, start with initial frame from which the video will start. Now, you also have the option to just do text. So I could give it no video, no image at all to start with, and then we can go purely off a of text base. From there, we then have the option for duration. So you can do up to 10 seconds in this video and you can also play with the resolution. So you have 1080p or 720p and I'll show you in the automation, we can actually go down to 480p. Each of those has their own price point. So right now I'm inside of Higgs Field, which is a website that has a bunch of different like video creation tools on it and image creation tools, but there's a bunch of different places you can use one 2.5. Right here is Kai AI. This is what we're actually gonna be using later down the line when we use the API, but you can go here as well and test it out in their playground. Same idea, you give it the prompt, you give it the image URL. Now, right up front in terms of pricing, what are we looking at? You're looking at, if you're doing 1080p, about 10 cents per second. If you do 720p, it's six cents. If you go over to Higgs Field, if you pay for, I believe their creator, which is like, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks a month, they actually let you do unlimited one at 720p for the next like week or so. So if you're already in Higgs Field, it's great. I don't think you need to get Higgs Field for this, but if you wanna play with it, just kinda as like a piecemeal basis, go ahead and check out Kai AI, the link will be down below. So now let's talk about the sort of creative workflow process to actually create content with WAN 2.5. Now, what you saw at the beginning is actually really easy to recreate, right? Where we had some sort of movie scene and had them, you know, say whatever line we want and bring out some product. That's actually a very simple thing to do. I mean, all we'd have to do is go to like Google, go to iconic movie scenes, find a movie scene, right? Literally just a picture, copy it, put it as the initial image and then give it a prompt, right? So we could take this one from like Clint Eastwood. I could copy this. I then upload the photo, give it a simple prompt. In this case, I just say the camera zooms in on the man as he holds up a can of Coca-Cola and says how much he loves it. I then just hit run and these usually take anywhere from like two to four minutes, and it's gonna show us the video. That is the simplest way to do this, but it's not the best way. And, and the best way is gonna depend on what you're actually trying to do. Now, the most important thing outside of us doing kind of these goofy gimmick videos with you know celebrities is we need a really strong starting image, right? What is that first frame? That's gonna dictate how good the video actually is. Now, if you're doing something again like this, you're just taking it from a movie scene, that's easy, right? We just copy and we paste it in there. But if you're starting from scratch, how do you make that initial image? Well, you have a number of different options. My favorite option for starting from scratch if we're trying to create something with AI is Midjourney. Now, Midjourney is a paid service. I think the lowest here is about seven bucks. You could also use free options, right? ChatGPT. You can also use Gemini. You can use Nano Banano to create the initial image as well. 
I would argue Nano Banana is best as like an image editor versus an image generator. But hey, we can't all afford 10,000 different AI, AI apps. But I really like Midjourney, and you'll notice here, right, this podcaster you saw at the intro, I created this using Midjourney. And you'll notice Midjourney is really the best, I think, in the business when it comes to creating these first images. And if you've never used Midjourney before, it's really easy. All I did was go up here and I gave it a very simple prompt. Close up of a woman podcaster sitting at a desk in front of a microphone, staring into the camera right? Give me a bunch of different options. If I wanted to like then play off this one, I could vary it. Like there's so many ways to get a very strong image in mid journey. And I argue they really look good, um, especially compared to some of the others, but that's what you need starting out. You need a very strong initial image. That's step one. Then step two is editing the image. Your two real options here are going to be nano banana or seed dream 4.0, right? For a lot of people, nano banana is the easiest because it's also free. So Oftentimes you're gonna create that initial image, but you're gonna to wanna to change it, right? We have this woman, she's the podcaster, she's at her microphone. Well, what if I wanted to create a series of videos of perhaps her holding up some of my merch, right? Or for whatever reason, or I wanted her in a different pose or in a different scene, whatever. I need to be able to take that initial image and change things about it, right? This is where Nano Banana is great, same thing with Sea Dream, because we have character consistency. So, right, so I can have it say, hey, have the woman, be sitting in a coffee shop, drinking coffee, right? So on and so forth. I actually have a whole video that dives really deep into how to use Nana Banana specifically to, type, to like put it inside your own marketing workflow. I'll link that above, but that's step two, right? You have your initial image. What do you wanna do with it? What do you want your scenes to be about? This is where you go into Nano Banana and actually edit it to get what you want. So step one was the most important, right? Creating that foundational image. Step two is editing the image, either through Nano Banana or Sea Dream. And step three is actually creating the video. And really, it's about crafting the prompt. Now, a lot of these programs are starting to do this. What you see right here is enable prompt expansion, which is essentially a prompt, op prompt optimizer. So I can put in a garbage prompt. And if this is selected, it's going to help it out, right? It's going to kind of nudge it along and make it a bit more expressive. I would argue. This is a crutch that you do not want to lean on because it gives you less control. Instead, what we need to do is we need to start coming up with a general prompt on our own and then taking it to an AI like Gemini, like Claude, like ChatGPT and saying, hey, help me out with this prompt. That way you can at least see the final product because with these prompt optimizers, you don't see the final prompt. It just gets changed along with the request that's sent. So you never see what they really tell it, right? And we're paying a decent penny, like a pretty penny for all these like video generations. I want to know what's happening, right? I want to be in control. So what do we want this girl to do? Well, what I want her to do is I want her to put down her coffee and then she's going to tell you to like and subscribe my channel. And what's the best way to go about this? Well, what I like to do is I will actually take the image. I will copy it. So I've taken that first frame. I dropped it in the cloud and I said, this is the image I'm using for an image to video generator. I want her to put down her coffee and say, make sure to like and subscribe. Can you give me a strong prompt for that? Now, this is obviously a very simple action, but this is still the sort of template you should use, right? And you'll notice it gets pretty detailed about describing the woman herself. It doesn't just say, hey, the woman put down her coffee. By making it more explicit in this prompt, it tends to give you a much better final video. So it goes everything in the action sequence, eye contact, dialogue, emotion, right? It does a lot better than I would and a lot faster. So we're going to copy that. We'll come back into here. We'll paste that in. And then at this point, we're just going to do 720p and we'll run it. Okay, while we were doing that, this video finished up. So let's take a look at Clint Eastwood and Coca-Cola. I love this Coca-Cola. It's the best thing out here. Actually, pretty good. I don't know what's going on up here up top, but the logo itself does a really good job. Like even like the dirty fingers and the lighting all looks pretty solid and it even kind of changes the focus. So Clint isn't, um, he's kind of blurred in the background. Now let's take a look at this one and see how it came out. Make sure to like and subscribe. Well, that one could have been a little better. <laughs> um, looks like it even added subtitles. So that's something you can also do. Um, and you'll also notice in the background that it can include music. Um, so that's another thing to note. So yeah, like you saw this one, these video models, like all AI tools right now, they're still not 100% going to be able to one-shot everything. Um, so that is something you want to know going forward. And so the last example we'll look at is one of my own products. So my brother and I run a creatine gummy business called Max Gummies. And I was like, hey, 
how about I throw these gummies into here and we have like Dwayne the Rock Johnson walk in and this is kind of what it created. I love creatine gummies. So, you know, it's not perfect, but it is kind of wild how good this stuff is getting. So that's one 2.5 in a nutshell. That's what it can do. You can see it's still a little rough around the edges in certain parts, but we should all be super excited that there actually is a competitor to VO3 because now we can actually have prices kind of come down and hopefully the quality will go up alongside that. So this brings us to part two of the video, which is the N8N automation piece, right? This allows us to get outside of Higgs fields, outside of Kai AI and create a workflow that we can then plug and play with other AI content creation things that we've built inside of N8N. So here's the Airtable setup with just a couple examples in here. So it's pretty straightforward. First of all, you're just gonna give it some sort of title so you understand which one it is. And then you're just gonna drag and drop your first frame into here. Remember, this is the frame that starts the video. From there, we have our video prompt. We have our duration, and you can choose either five or 10 seconds. You have your resolution, 480p, 720, or 1080. Then you have the ability to optimize a prompt. Do you want it to be optimized or not? You have the option. It defaults to false. Now, if I create a new row like I just did there, you'll notice there's some default values that populate duration, resolution, and prompt. What will not be um, filled out at first is the status. So you need to set it to standby if you want it to be created. If I hit create and this is on standby, it will then pull all that data and run it through the N8N automation. Once the automation is completed, it will fill out the video link and it will swap this to completed. We have that status set up that way you don't accidentally start videos you don't want to start and it doesn't like repeat videos that it's already completed, right? So all you have to fill out again is the status, define what you want here, and then give it the prompt in the first frame. That simple, you click this button and it runs. Now, the only thing you need to edit when you get this template, and again, you can get it inside of the N8N um, template itself, right? Right here, if you click on the resources air table template, it will bring you here, just do copy base. Once you have this up for real, you're gonna to go to um, edit field for create video. And right here, this URL formula, you're gonna to have to edit. So, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's just go through this module by module. So the first module is that webhook. You click into here and you go to production URL, click on that and copy it, come back into here and then paste it into here, right? That's what you need to change. And it's everything up until that equal sign. And when I give you the base, it'll show you exactly how to do it. Other than that, there's nothing we need to touch inside of Airtable. And the rest of this is very simple. So right here, this is the Airtable module. You just need to make sure it's on the correct base and table. And this is just us saying, hey, if it's set to standby, grab all the data, the frames, the duration, the prompt, all that. Next, we are then sending the request to Kai AI to create that video. So remember, this is Kai AI. We're using their API to create this. So if you click inside here, you can see all the API information and where I got all this up, all this info. You are gonna have to add some billing to Kai AI. Obviously this costs money. And then to get your API key, you're just gonna come up here to your dashboard, top right, and then just click API key and create your API key. And then to insert it, you're gonna to go to header, you're gonna do generic credential type, header auth, and then create a Kai AI header auth. What it should look like is something like this, authorization, and then the value will be bearer, bearer space, and then your API key. So a bunch of number and letters that you copied over. That's what it should look like. You'll then go back to fixed, you'll save it, and you're all set. Now, what we send in the body, you can see right here, we're just sending the prompt, image, duration, resolution, and then enable prompt expansion. That's just all the data we grabbed from Airtable we're putting inside in this request. From there, we then request to get the video. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know it's a pet peeve of mine when we have to do this, right? This if thing and do the, the wait loop. Unfortunately, Kai AI, same thing with Fowl, really, and it might actually be an NNN problem with one of their latest models. The wait webhook node just isn't working properly. It just kind of stalls out. If none of that rings a bell for you, just know that this loop, this is us saying, hey, is the video done? If the video is not done, we wait a minute and then we check again. Hey, is the video done? Eventually it will be done. Once the video is complete, it goes through this true um, passage. And from there, we then just update the record. And so if we look here, we're matching it by title. So it goes in the right row. And then we're just updating the status and then putting in the video link. Pretty easy, right? Overall, this is a very, very bare bones um, 
automation. But the idea is now you have the Wand 2.5 tool inside of your toolkit. And whenever you want to apply this in your greater AI creation ecosystem within NNN, you now have the ability to do that. Right. So I think there's a ton of use for that, especially as these models get better and better and better. And so to recap, once you have this set up and saved and set to active, then you're able to come in here. You know, you just put in your frame, put in the prompt, set your parameters, hit create, and it will automatically run it and populate for you here. That easy. And then last thing over here on the left, like I said, this will take you to the APIs you need. If you click on the template down here for resources, it will take you here. Just hit copy base up top, and that will allow you to download the Airtable template as well. Um, I also have links to the Kai AI Wand 2.5, as well as a breakdown of the costs in case you forget. So that's it for this video, guys. I think this Wand 2.5, I think all the AI video stuff in general is super exciting. I think this one is great in particular because Alibaba and a lot of their Wand models have been open source up until this point. 2.5 isn't, but it makes you think down the road it might be, which in which case you could have this running on your actual computer, creating these videos slower, but for all intents and purposes for free, right? And it also helps to remember like, this is the worst these are ever gonna be, right? They're only gonna get better, um, which is just really exciting. So let me know in the comments what you thought of this. As always, check out the school. All these templates are there for free and I'll see you guys around.